Hi guys, Ken Smith, Ken Smith Fishing. So welcome to the show this week. Uh, several things to talk about, uh, including some really interesting information from the uh, Sherlocker website, Texas Park and Wildlife, I want to share with you. Uh, and then later this week on Thursday, we will have part three of our talk with Todd Driscoll updating us on the, uh, the fish they're tracking with radio telemetry over on Toledo Bend Reservoir. I will be at Rayburn starting Thursday. So I'll be down there Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, kind of doing two things. Uh, I'll be posting updates for you guys. I'm probably going to do a little bit of Facebook Live stuff, but also be sure to check my Instagram. I'll be posting throughout the day, Ken Smith Fishing 2.0, right there at the bottom of the page. You'll see how to get there. Uh, I'll be posting what's going on in the water. So when I bump into guys, which will be pretty regular, I'm sure, uh, we'll talk. We might put a few of them on camera if they want to be. Uh, and we'll just kind of update you guys during the day, uh, kind of our own little uh, own little Kinsmith Fishing Live down there. So uh, upcoming uh, on Rayburn, I do want to mention, so first off, weekend after this weekend. So there's a high school tournament on Rayburn this weekend. Uh, and then the following weekend will be the Brandon Belt. So that tournament starts on Thursday. So the lim lake's off limits, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, starts on Thursday. If I remember right, I'm almost sure I got this right. You can be on the water at five, start fishing at seven. So it's a trailering event, which is really cool. They're capping the field at 400. I don't know if they're gonna get there. I think they're right at 300 boats right now. So they're still, you can still enter that tournament. Crazy big payout, uh, 100,000, even if they don't fill the field, 100,000 first place is guaranteed. And, and maybe what's as cool or cooler than that is Big Bass is a uh, an era a bass cat era with a 250 mercury that is i don't know seventy eighty thousand dollar boat for a bite for one bite and it's an 800 dollars entry fee 200 dollars side pot it's a huge payout even if they don't get to 400 boats it's just it's going to be a crazy fun event uh you can register wednesday night uh there at castle boykins uh thursday friday everybody fishes trailering event which is great so we're not going to be all piled on top of each other and then cut to sun to Saturday, there'll be 20 teams. I believe it's 20 teams. It may be 10, but I'm almost sure top 20 teams fish Saturday. Big Calcutta Friday night there at Crown, uh, Crown Colony Country Club in uh, Lufkin, Texas. So that's super cool going on. Also, uh, uh, also I think we've now, uh, Spark Energy will be paying out. If we haven't been paid yet, they're paying out in the next week or so. Uh, all the, I think five lakes got money claimed off of them this year in the big bass events. So, yes, sir. Thank you. I will put it right here. Sorry, I had a team member show up there. Uh, so, uh, they're paying out that money uh, here. If it hasn't already paid out within the next week, they sent everybody, uh, you know, 1099s and requests for where you want the money sent to. So, Thank you for Spark. They were a great partner last year. They paid out, I, I calculated up in excess of $80,000 in weekly giveaways, Bass Champs prize money, Sherlocker prize money, and then this these uh, $10,000 they paid out on the uh, five. They offered 10 lakes, but we collected money on five of those lakes. So thanks to those guys, they've been a great partner. I've really enjoyed working with them. Uh, along that vein, I kind of went across, I just got curious. Okay, so this was something that I was just doing some research based upon actually kind of banging around uh, in the Texas Farm Wildlife Share Lunker um, page. And I don't know that there's a great conclusion of anything here other than there are obviously specific days or there was last year to catch great big ones. But I was kind of curious where all the big fish that got entered into the Share Lunker program came from last year and, and when those fish were caught. So when and where, how about that? So I was able to download 400 information on 445, which looks to be about the number of fish that got weighed in Sherlock or now last year. Now remember, there's multiple classes of fish. There's eight plus pound fish, and then there's 10 plus, 11, 12, 13, etc. So <clears throat> just from their website, there were 440 fish, five fish weighed eight pounds or greater. By the way, that is way more than there were in the prior year. So we've all really started responding to them. And yeah, guys, I see the comments where guys say, you know, an eight pounder is not really a trophy. Well, you're missing the point here. The point here is sure, uh, uh, Texas Bar and Wildlife is trying to gather data to help them better manage these lakes. And this is the kind of data that helps them do that. So uh, there were 
10 pound fish weighed last year. So, uh, whoops, I just jumped slides there on my cell. So uh, looking through the months, uh, 37 fish. And actually, so the interesting thing here is July to December, very consistent. Basically 13 to 21 fish. The bulk of the big fish, and this is when the fish are the bulkiest other than maybe May, June, were caught January, February, March, and April. So March and April, obviously around the spawn, you get a lot more big fish shallow. There's just more guys fishing shallow uh, than there are deep, period. It doesn't matter where you go. So when those fish come shallow, they make themselves more available and they get caught more often. Now, uh, 10 plus pound fish weighed last year. So there were 72, I'm gonna call them 10 pounders. So 10 to 11, 35, 11 pounders, 17, 12 pounders, 13, 13 pounders, 17, 14 pounders, five 15 pounders and a 16 pounder caught in Texas. Now, it's my belief there were a lot more 10 and 11 pound, 12 pound fish weighed. I think when most of us in Texas catch a 13 plus, we're gonna report it to Shira Lunker because we wanna be, we want to have that Shira Lunker experience and, and uh, credit to our name. So um, I think those numbers are most accurate across all these, the numbers from 10, 11, maybe certainly over eight are probably skewed that there were a lot more of those fish caught than what we're talking about here. Uh, kind of looking at where, where you had to go or where 10 plus pound fish were caught last year, you can see it's a pretty big list. I think there's 40 lakes here, if I remember right. I kind of highlighted a couple of them. The smallest one is Pflugerville Lake, uh, impounded in 06 at about 180 acres. Uh, the biggest one is Toledo Bend, 182,000 acres impounded in 1967. Uh, the oldest one, and I highlighted two different ones right here, I thought that was pretty funny. So the oldest one, and maybe the biggest one too, is really the Brazos River. It's 1,280 miles long, not that much in Texas, obviously. But, uh, you know, the Brazos River's been here since somebody named it the Brazos River. But a little lake, Medina, or Medina, I'm not sure how to say that, uh, impounded in 1913, a little, little uh, 5,400 acre lake, uh, is the smallest, excuse me, is the oldest lake on this group. And then the smallest is uh, Nakanich over by uh, uh, Nacogdoches, 692 acres. And I believe that is also, pretty sure that's also the newest lake that spit out a 10 pounder last year as well. I thought, it, so I thought this was kind of interesting. Now, some of this is like a reporting, but some of it also is just big fish not getting caught in these lakes. So the biggest lake that there was not a 10 pound fish reported out of last year was Texoma. Lake record of almost 12 pounds. So that's probably not terribly surprising. Texoma kicks out a lot of seven and eight pound fish, but not a lot of 10 pound fish. Richland Chambers, you know, it's had a 14 pounder caught out of it. It's the second largest lake that there was no 10 pound fish reported out of. I wanna, chalk that one up probably to lack of fishing pressure because so few tournaments go to chambers anymore. So, and it's not just a tournament, but it's the guys practicing for the tournaments and trying to learn the lake for tournaments. Uh, Tawakini, it's kind of the same way. You know, there's been a 14 pounder caught out of Tawakini. And not only was there not a 10 pounder reported to Sri Lanka, there wasn't an eight plus pound fish there or in Livingston, both 30,000 plus acre lakes, which sort of suggest to me that there's not a lot of big fish being caught because you got to think somebody probably would have reported one of those. I'm sure somebody caught an eight pounder, but uh, no 10 pounders reported. Ray Roberts really surprised me that nobody reported a 10 plus pound fish, especially since there's been some really big fish caught out of Ray Roberts up to a 15 pounder. The rest of those lakes, uh, Whitney, Buchanan, Wright, Patman, and Cooper, all, uh, and, and by the way, Cooper's just the one that I scratched my head about. It was just a truly amazing lake. I remember the first tournament I fished on Cooper Lake, I had 26 or 27 pounds and finished like eighth place. Now it was a brand new lake and it was just a whack fest, but really thought it, it was gonna be something special and uh, it just has not turned out that way come to find out over the last several years. If we break it down a little bit further, uh, looking specifically at the 10 pound, we were, I already talked about there were 72 fish 40 lakes, but looking even at the, at the bigger fish. So those are by the way, 72 fish, 10, 11, and 12 pounders. 13 pounders, there were 13 fish weighed from six lakes, seven 14 pounders, 
five 15 pounders and one 16 pounder. And breaking down where those fish came from, I don't think this is gonna surprise anybody until you kind of think about this lake. So Ivy and Rayburn were the only two lakes that spit out multiple 13 pound fish last year. There were 17 fish caught 13 pounds, 13 pounders, uh, and two at Rayburn. Ivy is a is billed as a 19,000 acre lake. It's last I looked, 13 or 14 feet low. So I bet you it's not maybe a 12 or 14,000 acre lake. So it is a tenth the size of Rayburn. And I suspect the fish are being damaged over there pretty good. I mean, that's just part of it, right? I mean, if I, would, if I was going to go try to catch a trophy fish in my life right now, I'd go to Ivy, just like most other guys will do over the next month or two. And, you know, a lot of the YouTube guys, and I don't fault them, and they're trying to catch big fish and get views. And, uh, you know, you can call them a YouTuber or not. They're still bash fishermen, and they still want to catch their personal best. And, uh, you know, one's already been caught over there this year. Tyler, Tyler's Real Fishing caught, a, I think, a 14-something. He still hadn't posted that video yet. But he caught a giant over there just the other day. And I think the guy, I want to say Josh, out of Oklahoma, just caught a giant one over there, too. So Ivy's not... The, Ivy's not taking the pedal off the gas, uh, but then the rest of those lakes, uh, Austin, Eagle Mountain, Fork, and Palestine all spit out a 13-pounder. And that Palestine tournament, I think that was in a media bass tournament last year. 14-pound uh, fish, uh, Ivy again with five 14-pounders, uh, and Conroe and a little lake called Coleman Lake that I couldn't find any data on also had one fish. 15-pounders from five uh, from four lakes. Ivy had two, Fork had one, Travis had one, and Tyler East had one. And I want to say that 15-pounder was in the Bass Champs tournament over there, uh, in, the, in the Big Bass tournament. I think that's right. So I think that was... Uh, yeah, I thought that was right. That was uh, Tanner Spurgeon, uh, my buddy Tyler's partner. Uh, Tanner's a Richardson fireman. He had a 1547. Holy cow, what a fish. Which there's a video on that. If you didn't see it, I'll post a link below where I talked to Tanner about that fish. But so he had a 15 pounder. There was one out of Travis and there was one out of Tyler East. And then the only 16 pound fish last year also caught out of uh, OH Ivy. So if you kind of break that down a little bit further, it looks like this, uh, 26 fish over 13 pounds were entered last year in Cheryl uh, and 15 of those. So more than half of them were caught out of the let's call it 12 to 19,000 acre lake out in West Texas of OH Ivy. It's about three hours west of Fort Worth. I'm sure everybody knows that by now. Uh, and then two out of Rayburn, which is, you know, obviously a huge lake, two out of Fork, and no other lake with more than two entries. And, and interestingly, I think this just proves that, that what they do works is Ivy and Fork are both one kind of another of a slot lake. So Fork, it's got to be, I believe, 24 inches or longer to keep more than going to catch one over 24 inches. So there's a, I think, 16 to 24 inch slot. I should know that, but I don't get over there that much. And then Ivy, as I recall at Ivy for the Bass Champs Championship, you can weigh two over 18 inches, but only three under 18 inches. So they're kind of managing the harvest there as well. And quite obviously that's working since both those lakes continue to be on the list. Now, one of the things that I was interested in was how much did the moon have an impact on this? And I've talked to a couple of my buddies about this as I worked through this, and both of them said, actually one of them was uh, Brian Shook. Brian said, how many of those were caught on the, on the moon? And so here you go, uh, 89 of the entries, so a little less than a quarter of them were caught in the two days prior, the day of, or the two days after a full moon. Uh, so, uh, that's 60 days out of the year, about 16% of the days, and 20% of the fish were caught on those. So that tells me you're a little better odds fishing right around the moon. Obviously, March and April, I probably should have broken that down a little closer to look at those, but I think, actually, I'll do that, and I'll amend this video. Um, but the, the really interesting thing to me was there was a day. Actually, let me take a break right there. We'll cut away to my edit, and I'll come back. Okay, I just went back and looked. Uh, so February, March, and April, there were 241 fish, eight pounds plus weighed, 61 of those fish. So a quarter, right at six to eight. So one quarter of those fish was caught on 50, over 15 days. So 15 out of 90 
so those fish were caught on that full moon. And then another 33 of them were caught either side of the dark moon. So 90-ish of the 240 fish. So I guess the conclusion there would be if you're trying to catch a great big one, February, March, April, you definitely want to fish either side of the full moon uh, because that's when so many of those big fish are pushing shallow. So just a little aside as I went through that data, uh, I was curious about. So let's go back to it. Okay, so there was a day, February the 27th of last year. Now, part of the reason for this is it was a Saturday. It was a full moon, but it was also a Saturday. So more people on the water, more rides to catch the big fish. But that day, there were 14 entries. So there were, uh, there were 14 fish caught on that one day. Uh, that's pretty crazy that 3% of all the fish that were caught were caught in 0.27% of the day. So that one day out of 365 represents a tiny fraction of the days, uh, but such a big percent of those fish was caught on that single day. And kind of in hindsight, it was a full moon, it was end of February, and it had been warming for the full week. I went back and looked at the weather on that. Uh, that day here at Love Field in Dallas, uh, it was 55 at daylight and it warmed to 65 during the day. So it was just absolutely the perfect day and it happened to be on a Saturday and it was a nice day. A lot of fishing pressure, but obviously a lot of fish come shallow that day. Um, and then the, there were, I was just curious myself. Again, I'm doing these videos just because I'm curious. Uh, there were three fish longer than 29 inches caught. Uh, they were all 12 pounders. But Nacogdoches, uh, Rayburn, and Toledo Bend, which tells me if those fish were caught fat, those are obviously old fish because they were very long fish, that those three legs still have a, a really good chance to spin off some, <coughs> some super giant fish going out into the future. I then took a little deeper dive on the 50 largest fish ever caught in Texas. So right now the 50th largest fish ever caught in Texas is a 1546. And Fork still just absolutely dominates this list. Although most of these fish were from the eighties and nineties, there's just not been another lake built that has challenged Fork. But there's been 29 fish out of Fork. There's been four out of Caddo. And that just kind of blows my mind because Caddo is not the lake that I would look at and think, this is a lake that's gonna grow gigantic bass. And it's a lake, I've only been on Caddo a very few times in my life and I've never fished a tournament over there. It does not draw tournament boats. It's not a real big lake. It's, it's always, I've always heard it's the only natural lake in Texas, uh, but four fish out of Caddo on the top 50 biggest ever, two out of Ivy and two out of Amstead. And it's funny because Caddo really didn't show up on our earlier list. So I thought, well, has it just disappeared? But if you look in the last five years, there's only three lakes that have spit out one of those 50 largest fish. And Caddo's still there, uh, Ivy's there, and Fork's there. So they, those three lakes still obviously have the ability to kick out some giants. And you know what? I've just decided I'm going to go to Caddo sometime this spring and just go bass fishing. Now I know they've got lots of problems up there. By the way, I, I'm working on a video right now. I've had a lot of guys ask me about uh, Texas Park on Wildlife and them controlling aquatic vegetation. So uh, I got introduced through Todd to the guy that runs that in East Texas. And he and I've had a couple of good conversations kind of building the framework. And what made me think about that was the weevil, the weevils they've been growing up at Caddo and also down in Brooklyn to control giant salvania that actually get killed off by cold weather. Cold weather doesn't kill the salvania, but it kills the weevils. But um, it, it'll be an interesting show when we get it all pulled together. We're building an outline together on how to do that. So, um, so those three lakes obviously can still spit out a great big one. And, and just comparing those, um, those lakes and so just comparing those four lakes, uh, the four lakes that, that, uh, that made the list uh, with multiple fish on that top 50 list. Uh, in 2021, uh, the ones, the two that really continued to produce were Fork and Ivy, and, and Ivy more than the other ones, but Fork had four tens, three elevens, a 12, a 13, and a 15. Only one 11 pounder caught out of Caddo. I would be real interesting to see if there were a couple of great big tournaments on Caddo 
February, March, if we might not see some giants out of there. I don't know, but um, it seems like they're swimming around in there. Uh, and then Amstead still producing some big ones, a couple tens and an 11. But uh, obviously the big bass pressure, because you fish for big bass differently than you fish for everything else. But Ivy had six tens, three elevens, five twelves, seven thirteens, five fourteens, two fifteens, and a sixteen. That's just crazy how many great big fish. I would love to know if any of those are the same fish caught on multiple days, but you got to think probably not. But I mean, that is one more trophy little lake that guys got out there in West Texas. So I don't know if there's any conclusions to be drawn from that, but it was fascinating data that I wanted to break down and I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Uh, if you have comments about it or questions, please add them below and I'll, uh, if there's questions, I'll do my best to get answers for you, whether it be from the fishermen that caught them or from uh, Texas Park of Wildlife or whoever, I'll chase them down. So again, this week we'll be at Rayburn. Thirsty while I'm fishing, you guys will see the third part of the Driscoll series. Mm -hmm. And then we'll be practicing for the Brandon Belt Tournament. There's still plenty of spots available in that tournament if you want to fish it. It's going to be a really big payout. going to be a fun event. And uh, don't forget about, even if you're not fishing it, you should come over Wednesday. You can meet Brandon there uh, at, uh, <coughs> at Castle Boykins. He'll be there signing autographs and meeting people. And uh, there are going to be a lot of vendors there as well. So it should be a really fun event. So thanks for tuning in, guys. Hope you enjoyed this. And... Uh, I will see y'all thirsty, and then we'll have a bunch of fishing videos next week. Another video. And by the way, we have been trying to do the, the 10 boat reviews. We've had now four days where the weather has knocked us out of doing them. So as soon as we get weather wind is, and I'm not tournament bass fishing, we'll continue our 10 boat search. And uh, I'm getting a lot of emails about why aren't you doing those. And guys, you, you know, where you might get out in a rough day in a, in a glass boat and, and get a good view, a good, a good video, I'm not getting out there in an 18-foot alone on a boat with four-footers. So that's just no fun and not safe. So stay with me. We'll get to them. Thanks, guys.